Nathan Jude, I'm here with Wolves reporter, uh, Mr. Liam Keane. Liam, Wolves 2, Coventry City 3. I I'm absolutely shell-shocked, to be honest. Um, I think most of the crowd are leaving this ground. Let's not... Let's be completely honest here. Coventry City were the better side for 80% of this game today. However, taking the injuries aside, you are 2-1 up at home with minutes left in this game. To go to extra time is devastating, to lose it is unfathomable. Yeah, it's something I spoke about this week actually. Um, and I spoke to Gary Baddy at the press conference and it's something I was praising Wolves for and that was game management. They've been very good at it for the vast majority of the season. The United one here obviously losing 4-3 late on in that game was, was a, a bad example of it, but they've been very good at it for the majority of the season. And that was the ugly side of Wolves' game management today. Um, as you say, you're 2-1 up. Um, Mario Lamina, who has been an absolutely magnificent player for Wolves, but he loses the ball in Wolves' final third for Coventry's equaliser in the 97th minute. And he loses the ball really cheaply. And it's not good enough for someone at his level. And I won't criticise him solely for the way that Wolves performed, because it wasn't him, he was out of position, he didn't have a good game, but nor did anyone, part Ryan Aignori, if we're being brutally honest. Um, and Wolves struggled, Wolves struggled throughout the whole game. Um, you can hear the Coventry fans behind us, and they, they deserve to be celebrating based on their performance and how poor Wolves were for 85 minutes. But when you go 2-1 up, you get into the 97th minute and you've got two minutes left to see the game out, you don't let it slip from no. that point of view. And that, and that is where Wolves have let themselves down. No Dawson, no Cunha, no Neto, no Belagar, no Huang. It is, you know, what could have been. However, with the side that Gary has selected today against a Coventry City from the Championship who were obviously doing very well, they're kind of on the cusp of, yeah. of the playoffs, I still think that's a very disappointing performance overall. It is. Um, Wolves were disjointed, um, nervy. Uh, the, the energy in the, in the stadium from the, from, the, from the beginning was one of a great atmosphere the first 10, 15, 20 minutes or so. And then the fans start to react to how Wolves are playing and the fans start to get a little bit nervy. And I don't blame them for that. Um, but the Wolves players do not respond. They, they drag themselves through a, a couple of really poor moments. They had a couple of chances first half, didn't really take them, but Coventry had two or three chances that they should have buried. Um, and then the goal finally comes. Um, it, should it have stood? Well, that, that, that was the, the next topic. For me, that's it's handball. Um, I've been sent a couple of uh, closer replays since uh, since full time, um, and it looks pretty obvious to me that it's, it's it's on his arm and it's him controlling the ball and directing the ball into the into the net. Um, I think it's I think it's a poor decision. I think it's the wrong decision. But if I'm being perfectly honest, the manner in which the decision was made and how long we waited for VR to make a decision is, oh. what, is what annoys me more than anything because um, it, it's an embarrassment how the system works and how slow they are to make decisions and how um, they've stuck with an on-field decision that there is no way that the officials could have seen it on field because of the manner in which the goal was scored. Uh, I think the whole thing stinks, to be honest. Um, that goal aside, Coventry deserved to, to take the lead and deserved to be behind. They could have conceded more. Jose Sarr made a handful of very good saves. Coventry should. They have should been be now side. Three nil up in that, side, in that absolutely. Half. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Ryan Aitnori inspires Wolves to what should be a Wembley trip. And the Wolves, the, the Wolves fans are singing, "We're going to Wembley." It's the 96, 97th minute, and it's in their hands, and, and they threw it away. I mean, Jose Sarr just walked past there. He's absolutely devastated. You could see the fans. You could see the players on the pitch afterwards. They're in inconsolable, and. That's going to stick with them. I think it's probably a good thing that there's a break now. Yeah. International break because it's going to take a while, I think, for this to sink in. I think it's sinking for a lot of this city, to be honest, because we thought that we were from, from being devastated that, that obviously there was a Wembley trip on the horizon. It wasn't to be. And I guess the question now is how does Gary O'Neill lift this side now for what is going to be a very important period in the league? And let's be honest, Wolves are still in with a cracking shout of potential European football. That's going to be the test now, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. Um, Gary's described the team as this himself, and, and I think it's an accurate description. They're a very emotional group. And now, that emotion works in Wolves' favour a lot of the times, and it has done a lot of the times this season. But today, and on a couple of other occasions, it's worked against them. It's worked against them again here. 
he now needs to try and find a way of controlling that emotion. Because these players, the way they're going to react from this is going to be, a, as you just said there with Jose Sarr, absolute devastation. Mm -hmm. the, these players will, it, it's not that it's going to be water the ducks back and they don't no. care. This, this group no. of players will really, really be hurting from losing this game. Now they have no one else to blame but themselves. I'm, I'm not saying that as a sympathy point of view, but it's a fact that these players will be hurting badly. Gary's got to try and control that emotion now. Um, I think he's, he's a very level-headed guy. He, I think he's uh, the right person at the, at the helm to be trying to control that emotion and bring them back down to earth in a way. And you've now got, as you just said, 10 Premier League games where Wolves have got every opportunity of qualifying for Europe and that has to now be focused. This is a big test now for Gary O'Neill because really, let's be honest, since that Ipswich game, they've been on the crest of a wave. I mean, they have overcome every single bit of adversity and they've proven the doubters wrong time and time again. 1-0 down, I tweeted, with seven minutes left, they've 10 minutes left. You know, this will probably be the biggest comeback of all to prove the doubters wrong. To get themselves in that position, we all think this is the miracle season here. To now lose it like that, that's going to be a big test now, isn't it, for Gary Neal, for these players, because this is the first change from absolutely nowhere where everyone is absolutely dumbfounded. We are, I mean, I'm struggling yeah. to get the words yeah. out. It's very difficult to even just evaluate that game, but that's going to be an interesting test on this squad and on these players. And we'll hear from Gary Neal afterwards, and I'm sure he's going to give an update on some of the players, and of course, a lot of the big first teamers will be returning, but that's still, it's still going to be a tough pill to swallow tonight isn't it? It is, it is. And you consider that had they had a few of these players available, we was probably going to win that game. Yeah. Um, but that is... It's by the by, it, really. Yeah, exactly. It, it, it makes a little difference to the way Wolves, one, in which they performed, and two, in which they threw the game away. They're, they're the, the two takeaways from this that are the most uh, disappointed. And, and what will anger many of the supporters in here. Um, but it wasn't a case of... What I, what I did like is that it wasn't really a case of anger at the full-time whistle here. Mm. I think there was a lot of shock going around the stadium. Yeah. But there were the fans that were left in the stadium. There was quite a lot as the players walked off. They, oh, clapped, yeah, was... they, 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 they clapped off. There was... Um, one final show of, of togetherness I would like to think that hopefully Wolves can cling on to and move forward with now um, and it's these fixtures that come up uh, Villa after the international break is a massive game um, away at Villa Park and then after that you've got games like Forest or Burnley midweek coming up West Ham's not far away there's, there's big big games to go get points in and um, and the big, thing that, the big thing now will be and it'll be an easy thing to do and you, you wouldn't potentially blame them in, in previous seasons but I think Gary Neal has he wants them to a very high standard is that they don't want to drop off now and just kind of like quite easy to save for 41 points and all of a sudden they, they lose six out of the last 10 and they finish 13th which could happen but he won't stand for that and I think it's important that the players and the, who are coming back and also this group of players here on the pitch make sure that they can finish this season with a smile on their face and, and hopefully be in the mix come the last three or four games yeah and it's like it's an important final third isn't it of this season now and that's where the Bruno Large first season fell down with that final run in seven eight games or so without a win and um, and that will be what Gary is desperately trying to guard against.